All right, so today I'm gonna to show you how to build a pretty robust chatbot within Go High Level pretty easily in less than 30 minutes. So the only things that you're gonna need are about three workflows and two custom fields. One is AI conversation, where we're gonna store the conversation data to give to the bot, and then the AI bot response. And that'll make more sense later. So we're just gonna go into the workflows here and automations. I have them stored right here in a folder called conversational AI, and the three that you're gonna need is incoming message, message queue, and send message. And most people be like, why not just put it in one workflow? Uh, one, I want the ability to be able to see how well this is moving through the machine. And two, I want the ability to be able to message queue. So if someone double text, triple text, quadruple text, that it's not responding four separate times, it's just responding the once to all the all of the messages that they've sent. So just starting here at incoming message and don't let this overwhelm you. If it does, it's actually pretty simple and I'll show you exactly what all of this stuff looks like. And really all you have to do is build it once and copy and paste over. So what you're gonna do for incoming message is you're going to activate a couple triggers here. So you want one trigger for every sales channel within go high level so that your bot is activated in every sales channel, whether you're doing Instagram outreach, Facebook outreach, SMS or email off of a ad campaign, whatever it is, just so your chatbot can be active in all of these channels. And so what this is right here is this is, this is just a trigger that says the customer replied and the customer that replied has the tag AI bot and the reply channel is SMS. And that's universal across the board. Customer replied, they have the tag AI bot and the reply channel is GMB. And I do that for all five. Once that comes in, I'm going to assign it to a user, in this case, just to me. And then what I'm going to do is, the reason why we broke it up like this is so that we can break it down by channel. So what channel? And all this is saying is, what channel did this message come from? It came from SMS, came from Facebook, came from Instagram, email, whatever it is. And what you'll do is just you'll segment it by the workflow trigger is, whatever the trigger is, SMS is SMS, Facebook is Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. And then what we'll do from there is we're going to tag them. And so what this will allow it to do is to be multi-channel and let the AI know where it needs to send the message. So there's gonna be, I guess, two categories of tags you're gonna have, is you're gonna have the AI bot tag, which is just saying this customer or this lead that messaged me back is an AI lead, this is someone that I want my AI bot to actually respond to. And then next you'll have where they're going to respond to them at, which is AI SMS, AI Facebook, AI Instagram, whatever the whatever the sales channel is. Okay. And again, this may be a tad overwhelming, but all you gotta do is build it one time and then just copy and paste it over. But I'll just go down the SMS. So SMS trigger, they're an AI, they reply through SMS. I'm tagging them to me, what channel, SMS. I'm tagging them that they came from SMS. And are they active in queuing? What does this mean? Means that, are they active in the work from workflow message queue? And why do we have a workflow message queue? So if someone double text, triple text, that we're able to account for that with the bot. And this is another workflow that you'll build, and I get to that in just one second. But what we're doing with this is just, checking if they're active in the queue. Have they sent a message right before this one, et cetera. So we're doing an if else, are they active in the queue? If they are, we wanna remove them from the queue, okay? If they're not, then we don't need to worry about it. And then what we'll do is we'll update the contact field that we just showed a minute ago, AI conversation. So, and what you're gonna do here is you're gonna say, this is equal to the existing AI conversation plus whatever the contact, first name, just said. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow the conversational data to build on itself because if you were to just equal this to what they said, then it'll just start the conversation over every time. So on all of these, when you update the contact field, conversational AI plus what they said. And then for this one, if they're active in the queue, take them out of the queue because we're gonna restart that so that we don't send two messages. 
and that we reply to all the messages that they've sent. And then again, just update the conversation with what they've said. After both of those, we're going to put them in the message queue. And that's the same through all of these. Like I said, you could just copy and paste over. Next, we'll go to message queue. So once that message has came in from the contact, we've identified whether it's an AI tagged lead, and then we've, we've checked to see if they've just sent a message or if this is a reply message, then we're gonna queue this message. And so what this is doing is, is this actively being sent? Did the message go through the queue and is it being sent? If yes, then we don't want to send that message yet because we want to reply to the multitude of messages that they've sent rather than individually. So we're going to check, is it actively being sent right now? And if yes, remove them from that workflow. And if not, then we're just going to go ahead and grab our, our prompt. So what we're doing here is we're using the chat GPT AI that's in high level. We're prompting it for whatever we need, right? If you prompt engineer, just kind of give it information about your business, some qualifying questions, etc. And then don't forget to put the AI conversation in there so that the AI bot has conversational awareness. So no, it knows what's going on. It knows what's been said. It knows what it's done and it knows what it needs to do. All right. We do that on both of these. And then the same way when the customer replied to us that we added it to the conversational data, we want to add it again as our response. So we'll do that in the next step. But what this is, is this is updating the contact field bot response. Those the, the two custom fields that we did in the beginning. We had conversational AI and we have bot response. And so what this is going to do and why we do it this way, not just add it to the conversation, is if the message did get queued or someone double texted that it's not in the conversation, the AI doesn't, doesn't think it's said, you know, reply to both. It just understands that they've double texted so they can reply to both of those messages. So we're going to add the chat GPT response, the prompt that we made here from the AI bot. We're going to put it in this custom field bot response. We're going to do that on both of these. And then after that, we're going to add it into send message. All right, stick with me now. On send message, what we're doing here is we're if we're, we're checking if they're an AI, you know, if they're an AI tag lead, and then we're going to wait for queuing, and then we're going to send the response in whatever channel it was initially tagged in. So once it's added from message queuing here, it's going to say, okay, are they an AI or did they just happen to slip in here somehow? If no, then no big deal. If they are an AI lead, then we're going to put them in a wait. Usually 0.3 to 0.5 minutes is a good response time, about 30 seconds. Anything less than 30 seconds is good. And then what this is going to do, again, it kind of waits for the ability to queue. So if someone double texts within that 30 second period, that we're accounting for that in our response. So we're going to add a wait to queue the message. And once that wait is up, we're going to pick what channel we want to reply which is why we tagged them in the beginning. So when the customer's message came in or the lead's message came in, we figured out where it came from, okay? Then we figured out, is this the first message they've sent us or have they sent us multiple and do we need to reply to those? That's message queuing. And after message queuing, we generate a response to those messages or that message, and then we bring it here or we're going to wait to see if they send something again and if they don't, after this time period, we're going to send it in whatever channel it got tagged in initially. And so all that is, is after the queuing is done, what channel? The tags include AAI SMS, AI Facebook, whatever it was where this one came from. And then we're going to put the contact bot response, which was that second custom field that we made in here. And then we're gonna update the conversation. Again, conversation data plus what the user said. 
Okay? So if we follow it one more time, a message comes in from a lead through one of these channels. We identified that here. We're going to assign it to a user, whoever takes on the most cells. And then we're going to figure out which trigger did it go through so we know where to respond. Okay, so once that's figured out, we're going to add a tag so that we can keep it in that in that same spot. AI SMS, Facebook email, whatever it is. And then to add the ability to queue the message, which the problem I see in a lot of Go High Level chat bots is that it's just here's the incoming message, maybe conversational data, and then you know send them a message back. But what happens is, is that's not how humans communicate naturally. In fact, I'm pretty guilty of it myself to send three or four texts at a time. And it's not uncommon for a lead to do the same, especially when they come off of a Facebook form and you're a brick and mortar business. It's not uncommon for someone to reply or send multiple messages. So we want to account for that. So if they're active in queue, we want to take them out of that. We want to update the conversation with whatever was set up here that actually triggered this workflow. And then once we update that conversation, we're going to add them to the message queue. And again, going back to message queue here, in the message queue, we're going to figure out if, the, if it's already been sent, if it's already been queued and ready to be sent. If it is, then take it out because we, we don't want to double text. We want to respond to all their messages at once. This is where we send the prompt here. Again, a lot of information over the business, what it's doing, um, the conversational data, everything you want to include here, anything that's relevant to someone actually having the information to be able to sell for this business needs to be included there. And prompt engineering is important, especially if you're going to do this model or build this chatbot, because prompt engineering can be the actual difference between a good chatbot and a bad chatbot. And you want to make sure these are the same because these, these two things operate differently, just, just in a workflow aspect, not differently, but they're, they're two different things that do the same thing. And then again, anytime something's sent right here, we want to put it in the bot response, right? Because we don't want to immediately add it to the conversation, especially if it hasn't sent or said that yet. So we're just kind of loading it up here. It's like it's like putting a bullet in a gun. We're just waiting for it to go. We're loading it up here, and then we're going to add it to the send message workflow. And then in the send message workflow, we're going to check one last time if they're AI, so there's no sporadic responses or anything like that. We're going to wait just to make sure that they're not going to double text or if anything happens. Okay, and then once that's done, we're going to go back to when we initially found out what channel they messaged us from. And then that's where we're going to send our message. And that's going to be the custom value there. So it looks very, very complicated. It's not really. In fact, you know, I'll keep it here for a second. If you just want to double it up, there's no workflow trigger. Here's what that looks like. Here's what this looks like. Here's what this looks like. Okay. And same thing here contact bot response on all these, except for email. This is why I tagged myself in the beginning, because then you can just come to from email, user, you know, user email, or username. That's why you tagged yourself in the beginning. And then you want to update the conversation here. So this is conversational data, plus whatever your response was from the incoming messages. And you can kind of see that in action here. So what we'll do is we'll take a dummy contact that I have here, and then we'll give an example of someone coming off of a lead form. An example of you using a lead form to enact the AI is something like this. Is when a Facebook lead form is submitted, whatever lead form it is that you want to use, go ahead and tag them AI. And then whatever it is that you're going to send to them, whatever follow-up, whatever messages you send, make sure to add that to the conversation. So for example here, hey, contact first name, we saw you clicked our ad for easy AI system. What intrigued you about it? We want to make sure that the bot understands that it sent that message. So same there. And just to give an example, we'll use this contact here, which is me on both sides, but this will give you an idea of how exactly it works. 
is we can put this into, you know, say this one came off a lead form, in about example. We've sent this message. So, hey, Dave, we saw you clicked our ad for Easy AI Systems. What exactly intrigued you about it? And so Dave will say something like, I want to put AI in my business, but I'm unsure how. And so once that comes in, it's going to come into the incoming message workflow. It's going to find out if that was an SMS or where it came from. All right. It's going to figure out if this is the first message you sent or if he's double texting or whatever it is. Then it's going to add it to the conversation. Once it's done that, it's going to go to message queuing so that we can get the response to this conversation. And then once it's done that, after the timer that you put in there, it's going to send the message. So no worries. I can definitely help you with that. Would you be open to having AI bots handle that for you? Uh, maybe. I'm not sure how it works. And this is where the prompt engineering comes in. So you're able to make uh, a really good chat bot, you know, with good response time. It's not too quick. It's not too long. It handles double texting. It has really good information about your business because you're able to use a lot of the variables that are in high level. It's able to remember the conversation. So if in the beginning, one of your qualifying questions is, I don't know, how old are you? And towards the end of the conversations, uh, you can come back and say, uh, the, the lead can say, how old am I again? And the, the bot will know. Because it has all the conversational data, all the context around what's going on in this conversation. So I hope that's extremely helpful. If you have any questions or uh, you want to dive more in depth into this or you want me to expand on it, how you can add conversational pipeline movement or AI pipeline movement uh, or any sorts of abilities to your AI chatbot, just drop a comment below. I'm happy to expand on this as well. Thanks so much.